Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is JB. Welcome to the All Things Mechanical YouTube channel. And we're not doing anything mechanical once again today. It seems like lately the only thing I have to, to offer you guys is musical content and music-related equipment content because it is freaking cold outside. My garage is not heated and it's not insulated at all, and it's freezing cold out there. So I'm just sticking to the office and the little workshop I've set up down here for working on my guitar gear. And as you can see on the bench today, we have my very old Marshall G30 RCD. This is a solid state practice amp that I got when I was 16 years old, and I've had it for about 24 years now. Like most of the stuff I have, <laughs> it's uh, it's been kicking around a long time. It's pretty beat up. And I have noticed after getting this thing out of storage and uh, firing it up and playing around with it a little bit, that the volume pot on my gain channel is scratchy. It does not sound all that great. Now, I've never actually had this thing apart, but I did notice that once we brought it uh, out of storage and, and put it in the office here, every single one of these screws that hold the electronics in place in the actual cabinet here, all this was loose, the entire enclosure was hanging down, or the entire chassis rather was hanging down and it was about ready to fall off the amplifier. I'm missing one screw for the transformer that fell out and is gone. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, it's, again, this is just a practice amp. It's not like I'm gigging or touring with this thing, but um, let me turn this on and see if I can demonstrate the problem. <clears throat> but on my gain channel here, the overdrive channel, um, you hear that scratchiness? That's really the only, that's the only pot that is scratchy. The rest of these seem to be okay. And on my, on my clean channel, no issues. But since this, uh, since this volume pot for the uh, overdrive channel is acting up a little bit, we're going to go ahead and pull this chassis out of here, give this thing a once over, give it a good cleaning. I mean, obviously it's filthy. I mean, I've had the thing for over two decades, almost two and a half decades. But the biggest thing is I just want to go ahead and spray some cleaner inside all these potentiometers and all these jacks and everything and just clean out any built up crud or oxidation that's in there. And to do that, we're just going to use a product called Deoxit, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, but this is the Deoxit uh, F5, the fader series stuff. This is actually designed for electronics like this and musical equipment. So um, we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing apart real quick and maybe uh, get some cleaner on the electronics and then maybe just take some, some regular household cleaner and just try to clean up this uh, enclosure, this cab a little bit and try to get it performing the best that it can. Let's go ahead and get these Phillips head screws pulled out. I'm gonna pull this handle off and clean all the gunk and dirt around this thing because it's filthy. And uh, then we'll go ahead and slide the chassis out. Let me go ahead and turn the amplifier around here. I'm gonna unplug it so we're not energized at all. And even though it's been unplugged, I was playing it earlier and I obviously just had it energized to show you the issue that we're having with it, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up on the camera, but the inside of this thing is just, ugh, it's just nasty. I don't know if you can see down in there a little better now, but yeah, it's just, I cleaned out, there was all kinds of garbage and crap down in here when I first uh, dug it out of storage when we moved, but as you can see, I mean, we got cobwebs coming off the speaker here. Um, this is a Marshall Park series amplifier. So this is, I think these are made in Korea. Yeah, made in Korea. So not, not a, a British Marshall by any stretch, and it's a solid state, not a valve or a tube amp. A valve if you're over in Europe or anywhere else in the world, and tube if you're here in the States. Um, but this does have a, a K1999 date code. So yeah, it's about 24 years old, February of 99. So it's exactly 24 years old. Uh, 10 inch speaker, it actually has some really good tones. Um, it's just, it's a 30 watt practice amp. And you know, it doesn't have the, the grunt that a tube amp does, but that's okay. So we're gonna use my new favorite tool, my little Ryobi cordless screwdriver. And we're just going to back out all these screws holding the chassis in place. And we're gonna see if we can't get this thing uh, dealt with. I'm gonna slide the, the cab forward a little bit here. So I got room to set the chassis. Okay, should just be these four. And it should slide out, we'll see. Um, just to just to give my little safety spiel while I'm doing this, if you're not familiar with how the inside of an amplifier works or how it's set up or what you need to do to work on it safely, please don't crack one of these things open. Because there are transformers and capacitors and some pretty dangerous uh, high voltage stuff 
inside these things. And if you don't know what you're doing and you, you cross the wrong wire or you touch the wrong thing, you could hurt yourself or kill yourself pretty easily. So please don't do that. Not a good idea. So, all right. We got the inside of our chassis here. As you can see, it's all solid state. This is the reverb tank, right? It's not really a tank, but the reverb springs are con contained right back here. This actually looks pretty dang good. Uh, it's not very dirty, but I don't see any access to the inside of the pots here. Oh yeah, there's a hole there. Okay, so I can spray cleaner right inside these holes. It looked like it was just a press form little dimple there. I didn't see the holes in the sides. So there are holes in there. So I'll go ahead and spray that deoxid in there. We'll let that dry. And then we'll go ahead and continue with cleaning this thing up a little bit. I'm gonna unplug these speaker wires here so we're not stretching those. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn the flash on so you guys can see, and then I'll probably just put this in time-lapse. There we go. And the cool thing about these uh, deoxid, little, this is a little mini spray bottle I got on Amazon. Um, this cool thing about this is that you can line this arrow up and it has low, medium, and high volume spray. So we're just gonna set this for low because we don't need to go hosing this thing. And uh, we should be able to just spray it right in here work each one of these uh, potentiometer knobs back and forth a little bit, let it circulate in there, and uh, it should dissolve any gunk or corrosion in there and uh, leave a slight layer of lubricity on the on the contacts inside, so it should get rid of our staticky issue. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit in each one of these things and hope for the best. <laughs> Even for a low amount of spray, it's still really coming out of there pretty pretty rapidly. That's the volume, and I can still feel some scratchiness in there. So I'm going to keep going at this one until I can get rid of that scratchiness, if I can. Oh, that's better already. Yep, that's good. That is good. One more shot for good measure. Not sure how much of this is actually getting in there. Trying to aim it off to the side. Oh yeah, there we go. That feels much better now. Okay, <clears throat> so I got all the pots um, soaked with that deoxid. I also, the, the two-way channel switch for the clean channel and the overdrive channel, got that sprayed out, cleaned out. I'm not touching any of the other electronics, none of these capacitors. I don't see anything swollen. I don't see anything that looks like it needs to be replaced. And everything on this amp works. So what I'm going to do now is mount this uh, chassis back inside the cab, and then I'll go around the front side and I'll clean out some of the... Uh, some of the jacks here just to make sure those are good to go. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm just going to put a shot of that stuff in, inside there. This is designed to leave a, a, a coating to keep everything from oxidizing again. So I think that'll go a long way in keeping this thing healthy. Um, do not ever energize an amp chassis with it taken out of the cabinet. Um, if it's a, if it's a uh, combo amp and even if you have just an amp head, don't energize it with the cover off unless you really, really know what you're doing. Because if you have power running through this thing, I mean, don't even plug it in with the, with the chassis out of the cabinet. Because if you have power running through this thing, a lot of these components are, are energized, even if you don't have the power switch turned on. And for the love of God, don't turn the power switch on with this thing exposed. Because you can really, like I mentioned earlier, you can seriously hurt yourself. So anyway, I'm going to bolt all this back together. If the static issue doesn't go away, there's not a whole lot else I can do about it other than replacing that potentiometer. And I don't want to do that. It's not a big deal and you don't hear the static unless you're actually adjusting the volume. So I just wanted to see if we could clean this up really quick and make it work right. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it back together, flip it around, get everything shored up, 
Then we'll turn it on, plug it back in, and see if we've gotten that static issue resolved. If we haven't, it is what it is. If we have, awesome. Next step from there, I'm just going to go through, clean this thing up, give it a wipe down really quick, and we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. How many of you were, were going to just let me sit here and try to mess with this without uh, telling me that I forgot to plug the speaker wires back in? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we're back here. I got this thing cleaned up the best I could. I um, didn't get rid of the scratchiness entirely. It's still there a little bit, but it is improved. So let me go ahead and throw a cable in here. And I'm working on my Telecaster right now, so it's only got five strings on it. It's kind of set up Keith Richards style at the moment in Open G. So we'll go ahead and just have a look here. Put it on the gain channel and just show you here. So you can hear a little bit of that noise. So it's still a little bit scratchy, but not nearly as bad as it was. You hear that scratchiness? Um, this is a 30 watt amp, even though it's solid state. I have the treble all the way up, the bass at about, I don't know, one o'clock or so, contour at about two o'clock, again, treble max, and the volume's only at like nine o'clock, and like seven o'clock is zero. So it's not up very high, and then the gain, is it like 8.30? So the reason I have it set up that way is that the bridge pickup on this guitar, um, the what I have it on now, is you can, just by pick attack, you can really change the way it, everything sounds. So you can get some really beautiful clean tones out of this thing, just with a light touch. And then if you just get into it a little bit and you just dig a bit, just... it's very loud. I'm going to turn that down a bit, actually. So it's not set up for like, you know, super shredding right now, but I mean, like it all depends on pick attack. That's why I love setting this amp up just shy of breakup. So the entire tone is entirely dependent on how you play it. So again, you can get clean tones or... If you really want to dig into it, you can just, you know, hit that, hit the pick a little bit harder and, and you really get into that. Everything works. The amp is cleaned up. It's probably cleaner than it's been in years. I ended up vacuuming out the back and everything. Cleaned up the top, took the handle off, sprayed everything down, just kind of gave it a good once over. I mean, it's beat up. It's got some road wear on it, but most amps do, especially ones that are 24 years old. 24 years old is nothing for an amplifier. I mean, there are amps from the 50s still kicking around. All things considered, I think it turned out well. Just the thing is about these Marshall Park series amps is that they're, they're made in Korea using Asian components. The pots are really, really small and they don't clean up that easily. This is not a, an American-made amp or a British-made amp. It's an offshore-made amp. Even though it was made in Korea, I mean, there was cost-cutting measures that went into this thing. You can still get beautiful tones out of them. They still sound just fine, but you're not going to get the same level of detail and tone and component quality that you'd get from a more expensive unit. You can pick these up for, you know, a hundred bucks on reverb, probably less, actually, if you, if you look hard enough, find one in a garage sale or something, but... 
for a practice amp or a bedroom amp or an office amp like my situation is here, they're great. I'm still going to get a tube amp at some point, but I'm just not a good enough guitarist. I don't warrant spending 500 or 600 bucks on one. So anyway, that's how you use some Deoxit F5 if you're, if you're curious about how to clean out a potentiometer. Um, there are a lot of other videos on YouTube that go into far more detail and depth on this than I did here. This is just a quick overview just so you guys have some idea of how to go about doing that. But again, I just want to stress the safety component of all this. Power off your amp, make sure it's unplugged from the wall, and don't energize anything when you have the chassis taken out of the cabinet or the cover off of the chassis if it's, a, it's just an amp head. Um, just be safe. Electricity can kill you. I mean, it kills thousands of people every year. So just, just keep your eye on that and make sure you're not being stupid about it, and you'll be fine. <clears throat> it's not a hard thing to fix if you have a problem. With, and again, this, this issue, I mean, it's, it's light years better than it was. I mean, you can still hear a little bit of scratchiness in that pot, but all things considered, it's not that bad. And I have a feeling that that fader F5, as it sits in there a little bit longer, because it leaves that coating, that like oily film, I have a feeling it'll probably break down a little bit more of that oxidation that's in there as it sits over time and probably will improve the function of that pot as it goes forward. So... Again, everything is clean. This thing's in better shape than it has been in decades, probably. I've never cleaned it. I've never done anything to it other than just towed it around. So um, there you go. A cheap Marshall G30 RCD. It's just been cleaned up and, and brought back into, into service here after many years of neglect. So thank you for watching, everybody. Um, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe. I am going to be ripping this guitar completely apart again, even though I just did it. I actually have like three hours of footage that I filmed setting it up the way it's set up now, but I ended up ordering yet another set of pickups for this thing. I have some new um, some new saddles for it, a new nut that I need to carve out for it, uh, new tuners that I'm going to put in, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if that kind of thing interests you, go ahead and hit that like button on this video, click that subscribe button, and if you're feeling froggy, go ahead and click the bell icon, that way you're made aware by YouTube that I have put out new videos. That would go a long way in helping my channel out and getting my... Uh, getting my videos up there in the algorithm a little bit easier. So anyway, guys, thank you again for watching. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Be safe, have fun, make music, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.